Hi there, everyone. I'm going to talk a little about WANX, which is a new NPM package released by WANChain that uh, makes it easy to do cross-chain transactions programmatically apart from the WAN wallet. The package is now on GitHub and it's ready for developers to start using. The documentation here on GitHub lays out the specifics of how WANX is to be used, going in more detail than I will go here in this video. Instead, for this video, I wanted to spell out some context and talk about how WANChain cross-chain transactions work generally and then about what problems WANX solves and what you can do with it. So let's start by talking about cross-chain transactions. Here by cross-chain transaction, I mean the conversion of a digital asset to its corresponding tokenized version on WANChain or vice versa. So I can, for example, do a cross-chain transaction to convert my Bitcoin into WANChain WBTC token, or conversely convert my WBTC token back into Bitcoin. The same for Ethereum and the registered ERC-20 tokens. I can convert them into WANChain tokenized versions and then back again. So basically, cross-chain transactions deposit and refund assets into the WANChain network. So how does all this work? Well, there are two major components that you'll interact with. First, there are Storman group nodes that mediate the transaction process. And second, there's a series of smart contracts that you as the user and the Storman groups use to communicate and settle the transactions. Uh, so technically speaking, a cross-chain transaction is achieved basically by making calls to a smart contract and then waiting for calls to the smart contract made by the Storman group. The exact steps are all laid out in the WANX documentation. For example, for Ethereum, going inbound, that is inbound into WAN chain, and thus going from ETH to WETH. The steps are, one, send a lock call to a smart contract on Ethereum. Two, wait for the Storman group's call to a smart contract that confirms the lock. Three, send a redeem call to the contract on WANChain. And finally, four, wait for the Storeman Group's call to the smart contract that confirms the redeem. So as you can see, handling all of this on your own by scratch would be a bit tedious, like what contracts are getting called, which contract methods, what arguments do these methods take, what should we be scanning for when listening for calls from the Storeman Group. This is where WANX helps. WANX gives you everything you need to easily build the underlying transactions on the various chains. So let's do a cross-chain transaction, see how that works. I've written a really basic example that moves the Ethereum-based maker token onto WANChain. This example is a client-side example and uses MetaMask and WANMask to handle the transaction signing. So here's the HTML. There's really just a button and a pre-tag where we'll log our results. It also includes JavaScript uh, added here as bundle.js. For this little example, so that I could use NPM packages on the client, I decided to use Browserify, which creates the bundle.js from the main.js file. Oh, and the button has an onclick, which calls the doTransaction fun function. So in the main file, I lay out the code to do the transaction. After some initialization, I define the options, which includes the token pair that I want to convert, the from address, which in, in this case is an Ethereum address, the to address, which here is a WAN chain address, the amount that I want to send, here in way, which is equal to 0 0.001 tokens, the WAN and ETH addresses of the Storeman group that I want to use, and the redeem key. Yeah, as described in the documentation on GitHub, the redeem key includes X, which is a random hex string, and it's hash, or X hash. The X hash is essentially the unique identifier for this cross-chain transaction, and the X is needed to do the redeem. Here we use new redeem key to generate the redeem key. 
So then here is the do transaction function. It starts by creating a new ERC20 inbound transaction using true for inbound, and then calls dot send, and then sets up some event handlers. The event handlers just print the log to the console and call print log, which just stringifies the results and prints to that log div that we set up earlier. So let's run this. But first, uh, let's check the balances on our accounts so that we can see them change. Here on MetaMask, I have 99 odd maker token. And here on WANMask, I have 0.207 WMaker token. Okay, so I click the button to get things started, and then we see MetaMask pop up asking to do an approval for 0 0.001 maker token. I accept, and then when that's confirmed, MetaMask will pop up again with the log transaction. Okay, I now submit the lock transaction and then wait for the lock confirmation response from the Storeman group. In the meantime, just to remind you, we can see the steps of the cross-chain transaction on the GitHub repo. And the steps are send approved TX on Ethereum, send lock TX on Ethereum, wait for a Storeman response on WAN chain, then send the redeem TX on WANChain and then wait for the storeman response on Ethereum. Okay, so here in the logs we see that the status moved to approved and then to locking. And now the lock has been confirmed by the storeman group and WANMask has popped up with the redeem call. We click confirm and wait for the storeman group to confirm the redeem. Okay, the storeman has confirmed the redeem. So let's check our balances. Great. WANMask is now showing a WMaker balance of 0 0.208. Awesome. Okay, so this example uses MetaMask and WANMask. What if I wanted to do a transaction on the server where you can't use MetaMask? Well, I could use .send if I were connected to nodes with open accounts, but also I could get the raw transactions and sign them myself. Uh, so to do that, instead of calling .send, I would need to work through the steps individually. There are examples on GitHub that demonstrate manual signing, so let's check out the example that shows manual signing from Maker to WMaker, which we just did in our client-side example. This example uses Keytherium to get the private keys for the Ethereum account and the WANchain account. And as mentioned before, we start with an approve call on Ethereum. For that, we get the raw approved transaction with .build approve TX add the nonce to the transaction, sign it with the private key, and then send it out to the network, and so on with the rest of the steps. Great, so in this video we touched on cross-chain transactions and using the new WANX package to send transactions programmatically. Hopefully this helps show what WANX can do and maybe even spark some ideas on how you might integrate cross-chain into your next project. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.